What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Contrarian. Today I'll be going through an article Ted Butler just wrote a few days ago about why he believes the silver market is going to undergo some serious volatility and in the not-too-distant future. And as he's maybe rightly titled it, it is a extreme situation, extreme scenario for the silver market just in terms of how much uh, recently opened long and short positions have been put onto the silver market that already was a very tight market. Now, if you're not familiar with Ted Butler, he is very much so kind of a legend in the gold, silver, precious metals space. He has a uh, website called Butler Research. Um, I found this article on silverseek.com. I'll put the link in the description to it. But um, I'll just dive into it right away because there's a lot he touches on with regards to why we could be seeing this kind of long-awaited silver squeeze actually begin to form. And uh, basically, just as a result of data released in the last week, um, apparently Ted is saying that he believes we're at the most critical juncture in the COMEX silver since the peak of prices back in early 1980 when all sorts of emergency measures were enacted to deal with the Hunt brothers. And the Hunt brothers are kind of a phenomenon that has been somewhat forgotten in recent history, but they were very legendary back in the day with regards to actually causing a squeeze on the physical silver market back in the early 1980s. And, I mean, like today, silver was very undervalued relative to other commodities, relative to gold. Um, and so silver saw a massive run in just a very short period of time when the Hunt brothers just began to collectively buy up physical silver, and they did cause a major silver squeeze back then. But um, basically, Ted is saying that the trading in silver, both on the COMEX and in shares of SLV and other silver ETFs since the close on July 11th has created what appears to be a code red situation in that prices must soon move sharply higher or sharply lower or both, and he goes into this later, how it could be um, a both kind of scenario, both moving sharply higher and sharply lower, not at the same time, but one and then the other. So he's basically saying that just the amount of um, leverage that is on both sides at this point is extreme. Um, so there was already a shortage in the physical market. That is nothing new. So there were uh, ongoing physical silver shortages. This has been caused by a lot of things, but um, likely just the lower prices, whether that be manipulative or just what the market has assigned to silver, um, the lower prices result in less mining activity. And so over time, there's just less silver being produced than what is needed. Uh, and silver is needed for a lot of things these days. It's needed for semiconductors, for solar cells, for batteries for a lot of stuff for any sort of advanced electronic device is going to have some sort of silver in it and so silver is a very necessary commodity but perhaps it might have been mispriced in recent uh, months and years and um, basically we've had a large silver deficit for a while and this has led to um, just a, a a very much so ongoing physical silver shortage, as Ted has pointed out in the past. But basically, Ted is saying that the short position on SLV rose by 3.8 million shares to 22.6 million shares total being shorted. So um, that is a significant rise in just a short amount of time. Um, so the, the short position has increased on SLV. Not only that, but a uh, long position has definitely increased as well. So um, short position on SLV has increased by 8.5 million shares at the same time that the much larger total commercial net short position on the COMEX had contracted notably uh, over the same time period. So basically you, you go from a already very shorted market, which there were a lot of big banks and other um, investor uh, hedge funds, groups being short silver, and then you have this increase on an already shorted market. So um, basically, Ted is saying that this is a 
is a massively bullish thing long term for the market, even though um, it might not be good for these these investors who are who are short silver. So basically, he then goes on to say this was compounded and confirmed by the redemption of more than six million physical ounces from the SLV ETF this week instead of a large deposit of physical silver. So already they're beginning to have even more of a deficit of physical silver with this ETF. And um, by their ETF prospectus, they're required to, to have a certain amount of physical silver uh, per, you know, their, the holdings that investors have. And so already this, this makes a bad situation worse for this ETF. Um, but he says, by far the most urgent factor pointing to this code red situation was the almost unbelievable increase in total open interest in the COMEX silver future since Tuesday. And over just three days, the total open interest in COMEX silver futures rose by a massive 23,000 contracts. And this is huge, uh, 23,000 contracts um, with at least 20,000 contracts being of the true and non-spread related increase um, related to new buying and new net selling. So yeah, uh, he basically kind of distinguishes between what could be uh, called maybe more manipulative type of uh, trading activity versus what he terms to be true and uh, just authentic buying and selling activity. So um, without getting into the weeds on on whether silver is manipulated or not, um, basically says the sharp increase in total silver open interest over the past few days doesn't look related to phony spread activity. It looks very much like the real deal, namely massive new bets on price direction. This is at the heart of my code red premise. So both uh, people going long and short uh, increase dramatically. And it's, it basically just adds a lot of pressure to either side. Um, so it's it's another 100 million ounces added to a derivatives bet that is already too large at hundreds of millions of ounces on the COMEX and much and more than a billion ounces in over-the-counter derivatives. Um, so it's already like throwing gasoline on a raging fire, he's saying. Um, and while we do need to still wait until the upcoming commitment of traders report to know for sure what the actual positioning is, um, basically he's saying, that this is the market, the greatest market emergency in COMEX silver since the Hunt Brothers emergency in 1980. And they they basically caused a silver squeeze by just buying up physical silver and squeezing the market that way. And, um, it, you know, it might not have been the case where there was this much shorting on the market back then, but um, still we're getting to a very similar situation where there's just such a deficit in the silver market that kind of the only thing that can possibly fix that and and induce some you know holders of silver to sell is just higher prices and it could be massively higher prices from where they are now so um yeah he he says that you know on the buy side it could be uh money managers for technical fund traders um so so that it's kind of a a, a candidate for who could have bought all of the long positions um, and then, of course, there's all of the short uh, short sellers. So um, this could have just been an increase in the already uh, extremely short uh, big banks and other um, individuals like that, although we don't really know who exactly added this much to um, being short silver. So um, basically, he, he also says that the amount of buying over the past three days in COMEX was so large that prices should have carried much farther than they did, and not just by $2, which is what they rallied by. Uh, he estimates that if the sellers were purely motivated by a profit incentive, they would have demanded and extracted uh, a much higher price from buyers, well over $30. So, you know, that would have been a much bigger move for silver. It'd be more like a 25, 30% rally, not just a 10% rally like what silver had. So, um, Perhaps this is more manipulation in the uh, COMEX silver market. Um, we don't really know, but um, what what he's saying is that sellers basically 
accommodated the buyers by by selling to them at way lower prices than the buyers would have paid. So he thinks that you know whoever was buying uh, this much of a position would have been willing to pay higher prices than what they got. Um, we don't really know what you know how that would have played out, but maybe that's true. Maybe you know sellers of silver would have been able to just be more stingy and then uh, have the buyers raise the price a, a lot more. Um, but he says that you know this newly created 100 million ounces of new longs and new shorts is very much uh, a, a, an open position that must be resolved or closed out in time. So this will need to resolve uh, sooner rather than later as well, is what Ted Butler is saying. So um, we will really need to wait and see what you know what happens with all of this um, pressure that's been added to the physical silver market. Of course, it's been what um, you know gurus like Ted and other people in the precious metal space have been talking about for quite some time. You know, maybe it's the case where it just needs to reach a breaking point, and then it will break at a certain point. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's what happens or if it can actually be successfully controlled by the COMEX market and, you know, a silver squeeze doesn't actually happen. Um, I don't really see how they could get something like this resolved um, without just blatant manipulation in the commodity market um, with silver. But, um, yeah, so it is kind of a situation where you would think that something would have to resolve a certain way and yet it might you know there might be a way that it ends up being resolved that that doesn't uh, affect the silver price as dramatically as something like what Ted Butler is saying but <clears throat> he says that it could resolve either to the upside um, first you know going directly from here to the upside you know going directly from here to a massive silver squeeze or you could have kind of a a sharp um, drop in prices before it would resolve to the upside. So um, in either situation, it does resolve to the upside with a silver squeeze kind of scenario. But, you know, the path it takes to get there might be a little different is what Ted Butler is saying. Um, you know, I don't really know what is most likely, you know, going up uh, first or not. I don't have enough information to go off to uh, give a guess there. But you know, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments section below. I really love to hear what you are thinking about this topic, the silver squeeze. It's been just something that seemed to have, uh, you know, been talked about for a while now and just hasn't happened. Does it eventually happen or or does it uh, kind of peter out and get lost in, in everybody's mind and never uh, materialize? So let me know what you think about all of this in the comments section below. I hope to see all of you again at some point.